Hey, what's going on guys? So a couple weeks ago I created uh, a video on creating a responsive contact form using, uh, we used a little bit of grid CSS and it was just the front end, it was just the UI and I had a bunch of requests asking to actually hook up a back end so that the, the form would actually work. So we went with Firebase, that seemed to be the consensus. Uh, we said that we cre created another video where we took the form and made it so that we could submit and the fields would go to a database in Google's Firebase. So what I want to do now is I want to take that same form and I want to create a simple Node.js and Express application and implement NodeMailer, which is a mailing module for Node.js. And we're going to use that. We're going to make it so that we can um, you know, fill out the forms and send it and it'll go to a specific email address that you specify in the application. All right, so that's what we're going to be doing in this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoy it and let's get started. So if you guys really enjoy my content, you feel like you really get something out of it, consider becoming a patron to push me to keep bringing you high quality educational videos. Showing your support with even $1 means the world. We have different perks and tiers, including a $2 tier that'll give you every Udemy course that I release absolutely free. To learn more, check out patreon.com slash traversy media. All right, guys, so we're going to get started here. This is the Node Mailer website, and if we go down here, you'll see that there's actually a snippet uh, basically showing us what we need to do. We need to bring in Node Mailer once we install it. We need to call this um, create transport function, pass in a, a configuration object with our email SMTP information. Now, as far as, as um, SMTP, you can use Gmail if you want, but you may have some issues. In fact, if we go to usage and then using Gmail, it'll tell you that it's by no means a preferable solution unless you're using OAuth2 authentication. Um, Gmail has a concept of less secure apps, and that's what your application will be considered um, if you just straight up use the Gmail SMTP without this OAuth authentication. Um, but just to test and stuff, it's it's absolutely fine. But you don't want to do it with uh, with a production application. Now, what I'm going to be doing is just using my shared hosting account. Um, well, it's not actually shared, but it's a it's a it, it is a shared hosting account on my VPS. Um, but if you signed up for a shared hosting account, you you should have an SMTP server that you can use with your emails. All right, so I use InMotion hosting for my services. I'm actually going to be doing a, a web hosting series on YouTube, showing you how to upload your website, uh, how to create the account, how to create email accounts, all that stuff. And we're going to be using InMotion for that as well. Um, but you'll see that down here I have a, um, an email called test at traversymedia.com. So I'm going to use that as my email account to send from. And there's a support page right here just showing us what to use as far as parameters for the port. So SMTP port is 587. Uh, the server name is going to be mail dot whatever your domain is. So mine will be traversymedia.com uh, and so on. But what I'm going to do is you, we're, I'm going to have to put in my email address and password. So I'm going to delete that test account after this video. Just you know, so you guys aren't sending shit from from my email address. But yeah, that's what we'll be doing. So let's go ahead and let's set up our node application. So I have an empty folder here called node contact form. Now the only thing you do need installed on your computer obviously is node.js. If you don't have that, go to nodejs.org uh, and download and install it. Okay, so I'm going to open up my terminal. I'm using the integrated terminal with VS Code. I also have git bash integrated with that terminal. If you want to do that, you can simply go to your preferences settings and you can add in uh, this setting right here, terminal integrated shell windows and just point to your wherever your git bash is located. And you can download and install uh, git bash from git-scm.com. All right. So let's go ahead and just run npm init to initialize uh, our package.json file. It's going to ask us some questions. So node contact form is fine for the application name. Version, that's good. Description, we'll just say sample app using node mailer. Entry point, I like to use app.js. And I can go through that. Author. Uh, feel free to put your own name. License, I'm just going to say MIT. Is this okay? Yes, it is. All right. 
So now what we want to do is we need to install some dependencies for our application. So we're going to be using Express. Since we're using a form that's going to be submitted as a post request, we need to install body parser so that we can get the information from the form. Uh, we also need a template engine. So we're going to use Express handlebars. And then, of course, we need node mailer. So let's say npm install dash dash save express um, body dash parser express dash handlebars and node mailer. All right, so we'll get those things installed and those should get saved to our package.json file. There they are. And now what we'll do is create our app.js file. All right, so we got app.js. Um, I'm also going to install, no, well, I already have installed, but I'm going to show you how to install something called Nodemon, which will continuously watch your application so you don't have to keep restarting the server every time you make a change. So you probably want to install that globally, and you can do that with npm install dash g for global and then Nodemon. All right, so just go ahead and run that. All right, so in our app.js file, first thing we need to do is just bring in all of our stuff, all of our dependencies. So let's create a variable called express. And we're going to set that to require express. OK, we also want to bring in our body parser. So we're going to say body. We're going to use uh, camel case here. Well, why did that happen? Hmm. Nodemon gave me a permission error, but that's fine. I already have it installed anyways. All right. So anyway, body parser. We want to use camel case here, and then we're going to say require. And the actual module is body dash parser or body hyphen parser. All right, and then we want to bring in our template engine, which is Express Handlebars. So we're going to call this exp hbs and set it to require. And it's going to be Express dash handlebars. All right, and then finally we want to bring in Node Mailer. So that'll be require. node mailer. So we're just bringing in the, the dependencies that we installed. Next thing we're going to do is initialize our app variable. So let's say const app and we're just going to set it to express just like that. All right, then we're going to create a route so we can say app dot get and this is going to be just for slash which for the for the index page. We're just going to have this one route and let's put in an arrow function here. Or you could just put in a standard function, callback function. And this is going to have a request and response parameter. And for now, we're just going to say res.send, which will just send something to the browser. And we'll just say hello. All right. Now to listen on a port, we're going to say app.listen. Okay. And port number, we'll say 3000. And can also take a callback. I'm just going to put in an arrow function here. And let's just say console.log. And we'll just say server started. All right. So now we should be able to run it. Let's go ahead and save. And let's say node app.js. And we get server started. So if we go over here and we go to localhost port 3000 we get hello because that's what this route is doing. It's just sending out hello. All right, so uh, let's see, what do we want to do next? We have a bunch of middleware to set up. Uh, middleware is, is basically just like, um, kind of like configuration settings. Um, so let's see, body parser has its own middleware. Um, let's set up the app engine first, or I'm sorry, the view engine. So for that, we're going to go right above the, our route. Let's say view engine setup. OK, we're using handlebars, so we need to do app dot engine. And it's going to be handlebars. OK, and then we're also going to pass in 
uh, exp hbs and some parentheses and then we need one more line we're going to do app dot set okay so we want to say we want to set the view engine and we want to set it to handlebars all right so now let's add the body parser middleware so for that you know what I'm going to do is just go to the body parser documentation so we'll just search for body parser and github page right here and we just want two lines which are these right here so I'm going to copy that and let's paste that in uh, we don't need the comments so we just need these two lines right here all right uh, I like to use semicolons let's see what else we need I think that's it actually for middleware oh we need to set up our public folder so with uh, with with node.js and express if you want a public folder which is actually where we're gonna put our um, our CSS file we, we need to set that up so let's create a folder called public Okay, so any assets you have, any images or CSS files, any um, client-side JavaScript, things like that will go in public. All right, we'll actually have a, a folder in here called CSS, and that's where our form CSS will go. But we need to let Express know that that's the folder we want to use. So we'll say uh, public, or we'll say static. It's actually called a static folder. So for that, we need to say app.use. And we're going to say uh, slash public. OK, and then we need to say express dot static. All right. Now we actually need to bring in one more module, which is a, a core module. That's why we didn't have to install it. And that's the path module. And that's just to deal with file paths. So we're going to say require path. All right. And then let's go back into the express.static method. And we're just going to pass in path.join. And we're going to say um, two parameters here. One's going to be double underscore dir name, which just basically represents the current directory, and then public. OK, so we're just defining our static folder as this public folder so it knows where where to look and what to treat as as the static folder. All right, so let's go ahead and save that. Now I'm going to stop this server with control C and I'm going to restart it with Nodemon since we have that installed and that'll constantly watch it. You can see it's watching it and anytime we update it, it will, um, you know, it'll update. So if we go over here and reload, we're still going to just see hello. So now what we want to do is we want to create our um, view for our form. So let's go into our directory over here into the root and create a folder called views. And inside views, we're going to have uh, one view and I'm going to call it contact dot handlebars okay it's gonna have a handlebars extension by default and this is where we put our form now just to test it out first let's just say contact and save and then we'll go back to our app.js and for our home route instead of just res.send hello we're gonna say res.render and we want to render the contact form or the contact view and save reload and we get contact all right, so now we need our form. Now, the link is in the description for the zip file, which will include the index page. Let me just see if I have it somewhere on my, uh, let's see, I think it's in my downloads. Uh, let's see, here it is. So you'll have a, a link to a zip file, and this is what will be in it, responsive form with the index HTML and the style.css. So let's go ahead and bring those. Uh, let's see, how do I want to do this? I'm just going to bring out the responsive form folder. Hello. Where the hell did it go? What is happening?
I have six monitors, so it might have got lost somewhere. Where the hell is it? Oh, there it is. All right, so let's open that up. And let's open up our project folder as well, which is in, let's see, projects, node contact form. So those files that you just downloaded, um, we're going to put the style CSS into public and then CSS. Okay, just bring that over. And then the index HTML, uh, I'm just going to open that. Let's see, I'll open it with Sublime. And we're just going to grab everything in it. Okay, so we're going to just grab everything. And we're going to put that into, let's go back to Visual Studio Code. And we're going to put that into contact.handlebars. All right, so we'll paste all that in just like that. And let's save. All right, so we'll go over here and reload. And we're going to get the all the markup, but there's no CSS because we need to fix the link. OK, because right now it's just pointing to style.css. What we want to do is we want to point to public CSS style.css. So let's go ahead and do that. Public slash CSS slash and we'll save and reload. And there we go. So now we have our form. OK, and it is a responsive form, so I'm going to make it very small. Now, there is uh, a couple things we need to do. Let me just make this smaller. There's a couple things we need to do for this form to actually work with Node.js. So one thing we need to do is go to the form tag and we need to add in an action and a method. OK, so the method is going to be post. It's going to be a post request. And then the action is going to be a route that we're going to create, which is going to be um, slash send. OK, I think that's what I used. Actually, we don't need the slash. It'll just be send. And then down here, we just have just a, right, a button with no attributes. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna add the type of submit. So this is actually a submit button. All right. And I think that's really all we need to do. Oh, one other thing. We're going to add in a variable for uh, like a message that says email sent or whatever. So we'll put that right under the H3 and handlebars. We use the double um, curly braces and we'll just say MSG. All right. So let's go ahead and save that and reload and everything should still work fine. By the way, that animation that you see is coming from animate CSS. We just brought it in with a CDN and we added this um, animated class and this bounce in left. That's what that is in case you didn't watch the, the initial video. And like I said, you can use your own form. You don't have to use this one that we created, um, but you know, whatever. So let's now go into our app JS and let's create a post route for the submission. OK, so we'll say app dot post and it's going to be to send. We'll put an arrow function here. And this needs a request and a response. And then just to test it out, let's say con, um, yeah, console dot log. And let's actually let's get the form field. So we'll say request dot body. All right, we're able to do that because we set up our body parser. So let's save. And let's just make this bigger. Our terminal here because. The console log is going to show down here because it's on the server. It's not on the client. So let's go ahead and try it out. We'll put in and say John company. We'll say one, two, three design email address. Uh, we'll just put my email address um, phone number. We'll just put all fours message. We'll say hello and let's send. And there it is. So it's logging all those all those fields. So all right, good. So now that we know that that works, we need to implement node mailer. Now, before we do that, I just want to create a string, an output string that is actually going to be in the body of the email. And that should include all of these fields because we need to know what the user put in here. So let's create a variable called output. And we're going to set that. I'm actually going to use an ES6 template string. So I'm going to use back ticks here. Take note that these are back ticks, not uh, single quotes. All right. And then what we'll do is just create our HTML. So let's put a paragraph and we're going to say you have a new contact request. 
and we'll put a ul no let's put a h3 and we'll say contact details okay and let's see under the h3 i'm going to put a ul can i use emmet here i'm not sure oh yeah I, no yeah i can all right so let's see li let's say name now in in a template string if you guys don't know if you want to include a variable it needs to be in a money sign and then um, curly braces so we want to get the name now remember we can get the info with request.body and we just want the name so we'll say dot name all right and then we're going to go ahead and just put this in a couple more times this is going to be the uh, company so let's change that we'll say company then we'll have the what else email then we'll have the phone number okay make sure that all of these match the name attribute in the form so name company email phone and message all right now the message i'm actually going to put down here i'm going to put another h3 and just say message and then we'll put our variable we'll say request.body dot message and actually let's put that in a paragraph all right so that's our output now for node mailer we can just go uh, let's see let me just open up the node mailer site and this is basically all we need now we don't need this create test account thing right here we don't need to wrap our stuff in that we just want everything that's inside of there so this to from here to here and we're gonna copy all right and then let's go ahead and put that stuff in right under the output okay so we'll just do that All right, and then let's see, we have let transporter equals node mailer dot create transport. And this is where we put our credentials for our server. So uh, like I said, I'm using my Traversy Media account. So my host is going to be mail dot Traversy Media dot com. The port is 587 uh, secure. I'm not using SSL. So that's going to stay false. And then for the user, that's going to be the entire, the, the, the full email address. So it's going to be, um, what am I using? Test at Traversy Media dot, oh, dot com. And that should actually be in quotes. All right. And then for the password should also be in quotes is one, two, three, ABC. And I'm deleting this account right after, so don't bother trying. And down here we have our mail options. So the from, who do we want this from? So let's go ahead and put in, I'll just put in my name. Actually, let's put in, let's say node, um, we'll say node mailer contact. And then for the address, the email address should be whatever you have here. So we'll go ahead and put that in and then two is who you want the email sent to and you can have more than one so you can have a list of receivers i'm going to put in one of my gmail accounts um so let's see i'm going to put techguyinfo at gmail.com and then for the subject let's just say um node contact request and then plain text I'm not going to worry about that the HTML is going to be the output string that we created up here okay so we're going to just replace this with the output variable like that all right and if you want to create one for plain text you can do that as well but I'm not going to go through that so let's see send mail it's, this is this is fine let's get rid of the, the comments here we don't need that this is basically if there's an error if something goes wrong it's going to show us in the console if there's not then it's just going to say message sent 
uh, but then we have to figure out what we want to do once the form is submitted so we can redirect or, or whatever what we're going to do is we're going to re-render the contact form with a message okay remember we have this message right here this msg so we can pass something in that'll display there so let's say res dot render dot not dot uh, parentheses and we want to render contact and then we just want to pass in an object with uh, msg value and we'll just say email has been sent just like that and that should do it let's save okay make sure oh this should be mail not main so mail dot traversy media and again if you I mean if you're using Gmail I, th I believe it's mail dot google.com or something like that you'll have to look it up you just need some kind of SMTP server all right so let's go ahead and save this and then we'll try it out I'm just gonna reload this and let's see let's put something in here um, let's say John Doe company one two three design email address uh, we'll just say test to test.com phone number we'll just do all fours and we'll say hello from node app and submit okay looks like let's see down here oh one thing I, I forgot something I forgot something let me just reload this um, if you are not on the actual if you're trying it from your local host like we are right now it's we're not actually you know on this domain name we have to add one more parameter in here so let's see yeah so we have to put a comma right here and we're gonna say TLS set that to an object and we need to say reject unauthorize or reject unauthorized and we want to set that to false okay because it's rejecting us because we're actually doing it from our local host we're not doing it from the actual domain so we need to set that and that should fix this error down here so let's save let's go back over here and let's try it again Hello from node app submit cross our fingers and email has been sent let's look down here and we get message sent and it gives us the ID all right or the mess the message ID so now for the moment of truth I'm just gonna go to my Gmail account here let me just open it I'm gonna open it up over here first and there it is bring it over node mailer contact okay subject is node contact request and you'll see if I hover over this look at the email address it's coming from test at, at traversymedia.com if we click on it you have a new contact request John Doe for the name the company the email the phone and hello from node app so we are now sending uh, an email from our contact form through our node.js app and it didn't even go into the spam even though it's from our local host and all that stuff it didn't even go into spam so that's it guys hopefully you enjoyed this and you found this helpful um, but that's it. Yep. So thanks for watching. If you liked it, please leave a like. Uh, please subscribe if you're not. And I will see you in the next video. Hey guys, I've just created a new Discord server that's open to the public. The goal is to have a place where people can go to help each other out for programming issues, as well as just a place to discuss new ideas and get feedback. I also check in daily. There's a channel to request videos on YouTube and much more. So if you want to check it out, just go to discord.gg slash traversymedia.